My name is Ian Reese. I'm an environmental educator at Kentucky State University. And I'm going to go through an activity today called a grave mistake. And this activity is really great for classroom settings, um, small groups in a classroom. We modified it today slightly to show it to you, but this is a great activity for classrooms. And so to start, we'll go through a little background of environmental contaminants and groundwater. Um, so sampling of groundwater can help track pollutants that are in an area. Groundwater is harder to track and sample, so wells and springs become a valuable resource uh, when, there, when there is underground contaminants in the groundwater. Uh, many people also get their drinking water from wells, so it's really important to know if they're contaminated because that can have uh, significant health impacts to the people that live there and use that water. And so contaminants emitted from a point source into a groundwater will form a plume that can be tracked. And so to demonstrate this, um, I want to show you a, a short demonstration on how plumes form. All right, so to begin the activity, we are going to be playing the part of a physician in a small town of about 1,000 people. Um, people have been in this town since about the Civil War, um, and there's about 1,000 people living in this small town that we're in. So, com so as a doctor, community members have started to come to us exhibiting weakness, tingling, and numbness in the hands and feet and dark warts on the palms of their hands and the soles of their feet. So as we interview a patient, we learn that he works at a small local factory that produces wood preservatives. He's lived in the area for 10 years. He and his wife of 10 months have a private well in their house. His wife has no symptoms and he takes no medications. And so as the town physician, we are concerned because many people are having these symptoms and we need to figure out why everybody's getting sick. And so we do some research and we find out that the symptoms are a result of chronic arsenic poisoning. So somehow, somewhere in town, the citizens are being poisoned with arsenic. And so we meet with the town council and they agree that it's probably coming from the water and that we need to do some well water testing in the town. So here is a map of our town. Um, you can see there's residential areas scattered about uh, the main one being down here. Uh, there's a few factories here, here, and here, one more up here. Um, there's a church with a cemetery up here along, these are all roads. And so all of these different points, the PW and the CW, these are all different types of wells. And so we have um, abandoned wells marked with an AW, we have private wells marked with a PW, and then city wells marked with a CW. Um, and so, okay. And so on the right here, we have a list of the results of our arsenic testing. And so what I'm going to do now is plot a few of these, uh, plot a few of these results, and we're going to try and map and see if we can figure out where the arsenic may be coming from. All right. So here we have our community map. Uh, one thing to know before we get started, the highest elevation is up here in this top right corner, and then the lowest elevation goes down here to the bottom left corner. So we'll keep that in mind when we're trying to map our pollution plume. And so I've got the first round of results from the water testing company. Um, and so we're going to start down here where most of the residents are, and we're going to plot the, the contamination levels of the arsenic in the wells around. So we'll start here with C4. That's city well four, and they measured zero. These are in parts per billion, so zero. So we'll move up to city well two, which had a level of six. We'll move to city well three with 15. We'll go down here to private well 12, which had zero. Private well 10 with 12. City well one had 22.5. All right, up to private well six. We got, actually, that's private well four. That's eight, sorry. Move up to private well eight with a level of 21 over here to abandon well two, which has a level of 39. Move over to private well nine, 
which has 30. Private well 5 had 35. Private well 4 had 24. So we can start to see down here at the bottom of our, of our plume that we're trying to map, there's lower concentrations. And as we're moving up, we're starting to get higher numbers. So I wonder if we're going to find something soon that may tell us where the arsenic is coming from. So let's try private well 7 out of 12. And private well 6 here has 54. I think that's the highest number so far. So I think we have a pretty clear plume going here. Um, and it seems to be starting from factory B. Because we have the highest numbers. And as we go down, it kind of spreads out and our numbers get lower. So where do we think the arsenic is coming from? So based on the contaminant plume that we mapped on our city map, uh, we have determined that it's coming from factory B. And so if we think the arsenic is coming from factory B, what should the town do now? Um, so should they, what options should be given to the factory? So should we shut the factory down? Should we have the factory um, try and find the source of the arsenic and have them mitigate that somehow? And it's important to note that the factory is a major employer in the community. So this might have an effect on the discussions. If we're talking about shutting down a factory that's a major employer, that's going to have a really great impact on, on the community and the people that live there. So we're going to take this information and we're going to go back to the mayor and we're going to see what the mayor says. The mayor tells us that the factory owner has proven that the arsenic is not coming from the factory. So they, the factory owner has been able to prove that they aren't producing the arsenic that is being found in the water. So what do we do now? The next step is to do some additional water testing to see if we can widen the area and see if there may be another possible source for the plume. So we're going to go back to our community map and we're going to plot some new data points. So we're back at our community map. Um, we've determined that it actually wasn't factory B here that was the source of the arsenic. So we're going to do some more water testing. And I have Caitlin here from the water testing company who's going to give me some more uh, test results to plot on the map to see if we can expand our plume and see if we can figure out where this stuff is actually coming from. So Caitlin, whenever you're ready. All right, B12 with zero. So I'm going to put a zero here. E12, also zero. G12, also zero. Another zero for I-12. B-10 has 13. B-10 has 20. E-10 has 20. G-10 with 20. I-10 with 18. E-8 with 18. E8 has 38. Oh, E8 has 38. G8 has 33. G6 has 15. B6 with 15. E6 with 42. G6 with 61. So we're still seeing really high concentrations around this factory, but we know that it's not the factory, so we're going to keep going. I-6 with 48. B-4 with 6. E-4 with 32. G-4 has 65. I think that's the highest we've had so far. I-4 has 70. I-4 has 70, so even higher. B-2 is 0. E-2 is also 0. G2 is 0. I2 has 78. All right, so now looking at this map, we know it's not factory B. If we keep going up in elevation past the factory, we're still getting higher amounts of arsenic. So the only thing around here is the church and the cemetery. 
So let's go back and talk about why that could be. So where were the highest arsenic levels found? What could the possible source of the arsenic be? So if we look at the points that we uh, plotted just a moment ago, so we found the highest arsenic concentrations just south of the cemetery. So you may think, well, it's just a cemetery. How could that possibly be a source of arsenic? There's no industry going on there. But if we remember that the town has been settled since the 1800s, arsenic was commonly used as an embalming technique. And so back then, caskets were little more than untreated wood, so you would have a body full of arsenic in a wood box buried under the ground, and 200 years later, we're seeing issues with the water as those, as those things decompose. So now what should the community do? These are some questions to think about. What issues might arise due to the nature of the contaminant source? So clearly, the arsenic is poisoning people in the community. We need to do something about it. But since it's coming from a historical cemetery, there's a lot of, a lot of, um, there's a lot of value to that and a lot of problems that may arise with uh, disturbing or containing the cemetery. And so before we go, I want to leave you with this quote, past solutions sometimes become present problems. And so that's something to think about. Something that fixed a problem in the past may have unintended consequences in the future that future generations are going to have to deal with. All right, so uh, that wraps up our grave mistake activity. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, especially if you want to set this up for your own classroom, you can contact me at ian.reese at kysu.edu. I'd be more than happy to help you set that up.